change in the fundraising sector has never been greater. But innovations in technology are evolving faster than our ability to understand them. Are these advances good or bad? Do they have unintended consequences? And what is the application to the global fundraising sector? That's what we're here to find out. Welcome to the Fundraising AI Podcast, your up-to-date resource for responsible AI for the global fundraising community, hosted by Nathan Chappelle and Scott Rosencrantz. Hi, welcome everyone to the Fundraising AI Podcast. We are so excited to be here and be launching this podcast to talk about applied AI in this crazy changing world where everything seems to change every 10 seconds. I am Nathan Chappelle. And I'm Scott Rosencrantz. And together, you have our commitment to bringing you the most up-to-date information about AI and fundraising, philanthropy, generosity, and really our take on whether it's good or bad or indifferent to society. So the way this differs a little bit from other podcasts, because there's plenty of them out there and a lot of them are really great, is that we're really going to take this lens of evaluating application of AI, advances in AI, and really both kind of on the lens of intended and unintended consequences to humanity at large. So big task, but you have <laughs> probably the two nerdiest, most, I don't know, what, what do we call ourselves? Scott, nerdy and inspired and committed and committed. That's probably, that's good too. I, go I that. think we're inspired too, a little bit, yeah. but committed, committed to being nerds and inspired. No. So two people that really care deeply about the use of technology to make the world a better place. And we are so excited that you chose to listen in every week. We are going to do a short podcast just to keep people up to speed on what's going on and what you should be paying attention to, where you might want to dig in a little deeper and cut through all that noise because we know it can be a, a little bit daunting. So I'm going to tee this up a little bit and then I'm going to pass something over to Scott and we're going to try to make this as, this is unscripted. So I always like to see how he responds to these <laughs> types of questions. But, My favorite parts. Uh, right. A favorite. Uh, Scott and I I worked together just for a way of background. We've worked together for a number of years. Six actually, years? since years. Yeah, six, oh my gosh, it's crazy. Six years, seven years since we were really pioneering the first AI algorithm called Gratitude Prediction and Machine Learning, which is just, it was a lot of learning, about a year and a half in development. And we think back and the journey that we've been on, I think one consistent thing for me is that we've always had fun. Oh yeah. Clearly, you know, lots of lessons that we've learned, you know, the hard way. Some we learned the easy way, probably not as many nearly, but I think in all that time, we always just had a lot of fun and exploring and that's what we do every day. And so and just by way of background, Scott, why don't you give kind of that origin story and, and your love and fascination with models? I think you shared something the other day about like it was a T-shirt that made me think that I need to make for you for Christmas. What so was like, like down I predictive stopped models. What was it? Hooked on predictive models. Hooked on predictive models. Like I like I like I stop for algorithms. That's a pretty good one, too. That's so, a good one, too. We can have a whole no. T-shirt line if this podcast thing Etsy, doesn't work out. And, yeah, an Etsy page of just like nerdware. I mean, who knows? Like, let's see where this podcast goes. So with all that to say, you can probably tell by now that Scott and I enjoy the work that we do and enjoy working together. So Scott, why don't you give your origin story a little bit and then I'll share mine. And then we're going to talk and just leave this as a short podcast to introduce really what we hope that we'll be able to accomplish on a weekly basis and what we hope that you're going to take from this as you join us on this journey. Yeah, cool. So I started in the nonprofit sector, like most of us have by just falling into it. I got my master's in counseling psychology and quickly realized not cut out for it. And so I started as a prospect researcher 12, 13 years ago and didn't really know what fundraising was. I didn't, we'd didn't really come from a charitable family that we would volunteer, but there wasn't really a, a big component of giving back when I was younger. So I just kind of fell in love with the whole field, being able to do something that makes an impact and, and helps others. And I, I was hooked immediately. And in my role as a prospect researcher, I started taking on more and more responsibility, overseeing all the data for a $150 million capital campaign. And I started dabbling with some predicted models on projections of what they're going to raise at the end of the day that I think they're still using those tools that I built today, 10 years later. Transition that to a few different consulting firms where I built out their data analytic division, predictive modeling division, capital campaign fundraising, I did grateful patient fundraising. So Picked up a lot of different pieces all along the way. And in that journey, I came across a guy named Nathan Chappelle, who before I met you, only two things I knew about you were you had 30,000 LinkedIn contacts and you did a TED talk on AI and philanthropy. So immediately I thought you were just going to be a jerk and egotistical. Sure. And, and yeah, I, mean, I was right. I'm still, clearly. I'm still trying to prove myself, right? And then, yeah, so we've been on this journey for six, seven years and it's been 
awesome. I wouldn't trade it for anything. And so now, as you know, I'm associate vice president at Donor Search AI, meaning that I get to work with our incredible data science team on just doing really cool things every day and helping nonprofits and the nonprofit sector as a whole. Yeah, that's awesome. I can say, honestly, you know, over the last seven years, well, you know, certainly times of, you know, stress and excitement that we, I think both have this desire to learn Mm -hmm. and that's what keeps us going. Like there's just like, whether it's good or bad or stressful or indifferent, like if we're learning something new, then it's kind of like one step, you know, one more step, one more step. And that, that part's been a lot of fun. And so that's great sharing that background. I love the fact that you have that background in clinical psychology. And when we first met, that was something that I was like super interested in because we were using machine learning to really mind and understand motivations of giving. And that is an area that psychology plays the biggest part of really like, you know, how does a a person see themselves or orient themselves with this organization? And what are the drivers and motivations that need to take them from, you know, just knowing about an organization to loving that organization. And so that background in psychology still helps all the time as we're kind of evaluating and learning new things. It's so so cool. All the time. Yeah. And, And when talking to clients, I mean, really it's cool being able to kind of put myself in the shoes of a constituent or a donor or potential donor and figure out what my motivation would be and then how translate that into how it would come through in the data that we could play around with our models. So really kind of seeing that that qualitative and turning it into quantitative, that's what I love being able to do every single day. Yeah, yeah. We have a great time doing it. So by way of background, just so my path is a little bit different, actually, I started out as a technologist out of grad school or undergrad, actually, I started a company that actually first company was doing digital scanning. So we actually pioneered one of the first high speed scanners that was mobile that we could actually record on back then onto sounds crazy, a magneto optical drive before CD ROMs were actually writable. I mean, this is all gonna make me sound really old because I am. (laughs) I, I was a young, let's just say I was a young innovator at the time. I mean, I really, I actually was, I started this company literally while I was still in undergrad and, uh, and we actually built this thing where magneto optical drives came out and then the iOmega zip drive came out and then CD-ROMs came. And I remember our first computer, we actually had to find a guy who could, he lived in his mom's basement that actually could build a computer for us that could record on CD-ROMs. We were paying $6 a piece for a blank CD-ROM. It was just insane. So I went from there and, and then actually started my second company, which was, and it turned out to be the first company to sell skis on the internet because I like skiing. And we were there, we're kind of like, we were in the room when it happened, when the internet came out, or actually not when it came out, but when it became accessible. I taught myself HTML and, and surrounded myself around some cool people who just wanted to do something different and basically pretend that like we could run a business and not really have to feel like we're working because we just wanted free ski stuff and wanted to ski everywhere. And it was awesome. And that business is still thriving. My business partner bought it for me, sold that, ended up going to grad school, ended up working in nonprofit for 20 years. And the entire time I worked in nonprofit, I just always had this lens of like, always keeping an eye on what the private sector was doing. And then in 2017, I just got so tired of the lack of innovation in our sector, you know, running a fairly large nonprofit operations team and decided to take a play out of the playbook of the private sector. And we got deep into machine learning at the time, now deep learning, natural language processing. And, you know, kind of the rest is history. Scott and I met up right, right around that time. And frankly, neither one of us really knew a lot about this, but became probably two of the most annoying people in the world of just asking everybody else we could find questions. Like if there was any PhD I could find, I'd be like, hey, how do you explain this? And what about this? And we didn't have GPT to to answer all those questions back then. But that's really our background. So I serve as Senior Vice President of Donor Search AI, but this is not a Donor Search AI podcast. This is a fundraising AI podcast. And and I think that's super important because you're not going to hear uh, our own promotion of Donor Search on this, on this podcast. What you're going to hear is a lot of promotion for fundraising AI, which represents a body of individuals who care deeply about the area of responsible AI, our AI movement, and that essentially in specifically, actually the fundraising sector. So we ended up launching fundraising AI and Scott was with me a couple of years ago where we were driving actually in Colorado, I think. And, and we just thought some, somebody has to do something. Somebody has to, mm-hmm. to bring people together and there needs to be an anchor for like all these people who care deeply about using AI in ways that instill and foster trust. And there needs to be a, a, a place, a gathering place for those people. And so I remember you were with me when I got on the phone with the domain company because it was yeah. owned by someone else who had, I think they forgot to renew it. It was a grad school student, forgot to renew it. 
And I actually contacted him and he gave us permission to buy it. And I was like, this is awesome. I have no idea what we're going to do with it, but one day we're going to do something with it. Yeah. This was, and, and, was what? Yeah. Four or five years ago. Yeah. It was a, yeah. a while back. Yeah. And just sat on it for a long time until this conversation about responsible AI started coming out and realizing like, this is the play for fundraising. I bring this community together and I jumping back to your background. I, what I love about what you've done is you've always been like 10 steps ahead, right? You were, you had to find somebody who could build CD-ROMs into the computer, right? Cause that wasn't right. readily accessible. So it's not like you just took advantage of what was right there in front of you, but you always saw like where you needed to go, like, like Wayne Gretzky and being where the <laughs> puck is going to be at. Right. And you're still doing that today, right? The generosity crisis. It's not like you just took a page out of the for-profit playbook with AI, but really seeing like, this is going to be a situation that the nonprofit sector finds herself in if we don't change. Right. And then fundraising AI, like talking about responsible artificial intelligence when the White House is talking about it, when when the EU is talking about it, when everyone is talking about it and still trying to figure it out, like you bringing us like right in the center of all of this and closing the gap on where the nonprofit sector has been a decade behind for profits for, for way too long. Yeah. Well, you know, and thank you for all of that. I mean, I don't really, I might get a shirt that says like Wayne Gretzky of, of <laughs> data or and I don't know now, but you know, now I, I, and sometimes it's a lovely place to be like worried about things in the future that other people aren't worried about. But I think it, when we built that first algorithm back in 2017, I realized like, this is, this is going to change everything. And, and I became super convicted around the need to like share with others. Like you need to pay attention. You're one day you're going to need to adopt this because there's no competing without it. And something has changed. And, and you've seen this change because we work so closely together is that over the years, I've become much less interested in convincing people to use AI, but much more interested in making sure that AI is being used responsibly because with great power comes great responsibility. And, and this is, you know, truly a legacy thing. While Scott and I have both, you know, full-time paid jobs that we're very, you know, grateful for, our other full-time non-paid job is really fundraising AI, which is the most grassrootsy type of thing of people coming together that give a crap, that also are concerned about the same things that all mm -hmm. admit that no one knows the answers, but but together we could somehow create answers and best practices. And and that's what fundraising AI has become. I mean, it's become a group of uh, 6,000 people from 38 countries last year got together to learn from one another. And this podcast is really, I think for me, if I could just, well, we'll transition to this kind of final part is like, what do we hope that this podcast becomes? And I think each of us have kind of a different lens on this. For me though, it's the idea that until... I read a newspaper article or a magazine article because no one actually reads newspapers or e-zine or whatever you call it online or a blog. Easy. And until the word responsible is ubiquitous with AI, we have work to do. Like, and for me, while we can gather 6,000 people from 38 countries and we can, we can get sponsors to come together to really put their egos aside and say, this is for the benefit of mankind. Like amazing things have happened through this. But until we've really created this, this idea that responsible is is ai and mm -hmm. ai is responsible then we've done our job and we can cancel the podcast and you know get that extra you know time on our on our calendar every week but until that time it wasn't enough to just to do do something once a year to bring people together and put a bunch of videos online scott and i continuously have people ask us like well where do you get your information and how do you get your information and he and I, because we're the nerds that we are, probably spend 15 hours a week digesting yeah. stuff. And we talked the other day, and the reason why we can do that is because neither of us watch sports. And we're happy to take that burden on for you if you're a sport lover. And this podcast is the answer so that you can watch your sports, jump on here for 20 minutes, learn, you know, find out what you missed last week and what you need to dive into. So I don't know. That's that's kind of my big take on it, Scott. What's yours, if you have anything different to add on that? First of all, I love what you said, and it reminds me of the the... CEO of Google wrote not too long ago that the only AI race that matters is the race for responsible AI. So it is really like if you're doing AI and they are transparent, you aren't accountable, you aren't ethical, then you either are intentionally doing it for nefarious reasons or you shouldn't be doing it. Really driving that point home, especially for nonprofits, because they are everything that they're doing is built on trust. So making sure that this is a platform for that, fundraising AI is a platform for that. Really what I'm hoping to get out of this or hoping what this podcast brings to people is just making, for lack of a better term or, or an overused term, demystifying AI, right? It's this, what is it? What isn't it? Is everything AI? Is my computer built on AI right now? And what does it mean for me? Like making it actionable, making it practical, and just really making it yeah. tangible. Like 
what do you need to know? What do you need to worry about? And what do you just need to just kind of put aside and don't even think about it? again? Well, and our listeners are going to be in for a real treat because Scott and I speak every morning. We start our day. Yeah, he's like, he's in New York and I'm on the West Coast and we start our day talking about all this nerdy stuff. And he is really good at coming up with like weird, obscure ways of describing AI. And he'll be like, AI is like baking a cake or like AI is like, you know, having a microwave. And I'm just like always amazed at how he, and this was before ChatGPT, like how he just comes up with these things. So I think that's so much of it though, right? Because there's so much that comes at us and there's a lot of things that are interesting, but maybe not beneficial for us to know. Like right. we're, we're just not going to, not practical, I guess is probably a, a better word for it. And so I think that's where we could distill down in 20 minutes a week and just say, yeah, you need to pay attention to this. And I think where this podcast is just a little bit different is that, again, there's a lot of applied AI podcasts that are really interesting and you know might highlight tools that you should jump into because they're going to save you time or whatever. But Scott and I have just this this lens that we can't of uh, we can't we can't turn off. Like we we have this lens toward responsible AI that we can't turn off. So everything we see or compare against, we're always comparing about is this good in the short term? Is it good in the long term? What are the the consequences or unintended consequences? And so I think that's where this is going to be really cool to just shed light on some areas of, of focus. And so I'm super excited to be here. I think this fills a gap in the space on this applied AI for fundraising in a responsible way. And I cannot wait to spend time with you to have fun, authentic, maybe good debates on things that you like than things that I don't like and and will come up, you know, with an answer in the middle there. But I'm so excited for the listeners that are going to come on this journey with us. And, you know, as we highlight, you know, leaders in our industry and new technology in our industry. So welcome to Fundraising AI, AI Podcast. Scott, do you want to close us out? Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for joining. It's going to, we promise it's going to be educational, formative, entertaining, and you list, get to listen to two nerds talk about nerdy stuff. So thanks for joining. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for the next one.